what was the inspiration behind your designs? I thought through like what you know symbolism and what subject matter and, and what motifs would would represent Filipino culture well from obviously like the Carabao and the Sampaguita and you know the Philippines checkered flag like on the sides of it um, and so I was thinking of like different like design elements that I thought maybe maybe someone who's not Filipino at all might walk into a store and go that's a really cool shoe but then someone who is you know Filipino or half Filipino or just any sort of like Filipino descendant could see that and say like wait I, I recognize all of those symbols um whether you know it's like a young person like me or you know my dad or um whoever it is I want to make something that people can recognize see si daddy naman what made you decide to migrate to the U.S. I graduated from USD in 1978. My first job was in a bank and I already had kids and I didn't think that uh, I was going anywhere. So I decided, okay, maybe I'll just gonna try to, to work abroad. So the first one, I went to, uh, I went to Saudi Arabia. I worked there as an accountant in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, and then, uh, after eight years, my contract was finished. My American employer uh, offered me a job in the States. If you want to work in the States, I can, I can bring a family. Of course, I took it. That's what made me migrate to, to the States. I went through ups and downs. You know, like I said, if you have family here, you can't just say, sit down and wait for something to happen. You have to go after it. But Daddy Oliver, no mga panahon na yon, during those challenging times, naisip mo bang bumalik ulit sa Pilipinas? O talagang lalaban no. ka? No, lalaban ako. Kasi I'm, I'm already here. Here in the States, you have every opportunity to, to succeed. It's up to you. If you just say, oh, I give up because... You know, I cannot take it anymore. I mean, you're not a fight. You have to fight for it. How was it like growing up as a Filipino in your area? It was tough growing up. And I think I, I can see, you know, for my parents, them wanting, to, wanting us to embrace, you know, our culture and our tradition. And then, you know, simple things like if I'd go to school and I would talk about like, you know, my nana lives with us or like my mom would pack a certain snack. My classmates would always be like, what? what are you eating? Or like they wouldn't understand. And so for me, I think for the longest time growing up, I was so embarrassed of my culture because I didn't have anyone like my age or my peers to, to relate to. And so I think I think I think for the longest time I had a really I had I had a hard time with it feeling different. And I think it wasn't until I, I grew older and I began to look back and became more introspective about growing up that, you know, like my culture is so rich. It's so beautiful. Like there's so much story. There's so much heritage. There's so much to celebrate. Yeah, I think I look back and I'm just I'm, I'm sad that I wasn't able to embrace those things. And I think it's because I was met with like resistance or people people would misunderstand or not, you know, fully be able to wrap their mind around like the food I ate or the culture or my family practices at home. And a lot of the time that would just translate into racism, you know, and so I think being able now, especially with this project to do something that's like, there's no other big opportunity that, you know, than this for me as of right now to like celebrate my culture on such like a big platform, especially within footwear. And so being able to do this was really special. And it was, it was very full circle to go from growing up and feeling ashamed of my culture to now like on a global scale, celebrating my culture. Stronger Together, the GMA Pinoy TV podcast season two. Now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the GMA Pinoy TV Facebook page.